What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and we are in episode 700 of the podcast. So every time we do a 100th episode, I bring Crystal on. This time it's no different. I got Crystal here. I got Roger here. There's all kinds of background noise and chaos, but that's what this whole podcast is about, embracing the chaos of our life in its current state. So third, enjoy the conversation. I got no doubt that um, hopefully you'll get some entertainment out of it, some insight. So without further delay, sit back, relax, enjoy the conversation with my wife and I for episode 700. Accompanied by my lovely bride and son, and we are diving into episode 700 of the podcast. How are you, babe? I'm good. Good. We've got a limited time to record this, like 20 minutes, because Roger's got an appointment. It's been total chaos getting this set up, and he's eating some keto pizza because he doesn't want to be alone. So we've got him in the background Mm -hmm. eating keto pizza, making noise, and coloring. By the background means right next to Crystal. Yes. Uh, But... It is what it is. We're in a season of life where we have to just embrace the chaos. And with every hundredth episode I've published, I've brought Crystal on. And we've just kind of given an update what's happened over the past hundred episodes worth of time. Uh, So here we are. It's been about a year, 11 months, I think, just shy of a year from episode 600. A lot has happened in that time. How you doing, babe? I'm good. You're good. <laughs> good. That's all we can say. We're yeah. just good. Yeah. Um, do you remember what the theme for the manifesto for this year was? Is um, I can't ever say it in the right order. Recalibrate. Reflect. Reflect. Recalibrate. Yeah. Reengage. That one. And it's funny because I feel like we are Whew. doing things that are in line with that, but I feel like the theme or manifesto for the year could totally also be... Embrace the chaos. Yeah, or just like (laughs) hold on to your butt, or uh, life is currently a cluster. Cluster, yes. Cluster (laughs) is where we're going to end that one. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, we have had a lot happen in the past 11 months. We did the competitions. We did several podcast episodes that kind of like went deep into the competitions, did five shows, got my pro card, competed in two pro shows, competed at Worlds. And most of those shows were us driving to them personally with Rigel in the car seat in the middle of a big rig. Mm-hmm. Uh, so total chaos there. And But we did a deep dive into those. So I'm not going to dive too deep into the competitions. But what else monumental has happened in the past 11 months? Anything come to mind off the top of your head? No. I feel like no. it was just like a big time getting you through your prep. Yeah. And then it's just been really busy and kind of chaotic since then. It's interesting because we've got, I've talked about the whole 10 segregate model and how we've got these five primary pillars of our life, you know, health, wealth, relationships, self-development, spirituality. And I definitely can look at those pillars and confidently say we've got very defined things on the day-to-day that fit into each of those pillars. And the whole concept of integrity is like not have this balance. And I definitely don't feel like anything in our life is balanced right now. So like yeah. in that regard, we're right on point. Uh, lots of tension. Um, mm-hmm. Heck, we don't even talk to each other. You know, no. like our relationship is interesting <laughs> because like this right here, this 20-minute rush podcast is probably the most time we've had to talk to each other. This is the first time we've actually sat down, looked each other in the eye and <laughs> talked. And probably... Four months, maybe. Yeah, uh, which it is not has good. been. I mean, you guys like probably think we're over exaggerating, but it really has been a little bit crazy. Yeah, like it's it's probably not healthy. It it's not. Yeah. But we're making it through, and we know that this is just like a really busy, stressful, weird season. I'm trying to get better at saying no to things and being more selective on what I say yes to. But all the things that I've said yes to are things that I feel like I should be saying yes to. Like right now, I'm yeah. I'm training for the 50 mile march for raising awareness for veterans, and that's at the end of this month, end of August. So I've committed to walking 20,000 steps a day minimum in preparation for that. And the way the day works out, it's I pretty much have like a two and a half hour block where I go out and walk seven or eight miles. And that's two and a half hours I'm no longer gonna get with y'all or have time to fix everything else going on in life. So it just adds more chaos to our already chaotic life. But that's just like everything, yep. like. 
there's never an ideal time for any of the, the nonsense that's going on. Like we had our sheep get sick, so we spent half the week babysitting a sick lamb. Yeah. Uh, Diesel, our dog, is equally as chaotic. Mm-hmm. Who is actually going to a trainer? Actually, we haven't even talked about Diesel on the podcast. Yeah, we've got a dog. We got a dog! <laughs> Yay! He's seven months old. He's a Connie Corso. He is awesome, but also crazy. He's he does. Big. He's huge. He's already like ninety-five pounds. He's probably hundred pounds by now. No, because it was like three weeks ago that he went to the vet. And he was ninety pounds then. Ninety-two. Mm-hmm. I bet he's hundred pounds now. He's hey, putting on weight pretty. Quick. I don't know. He's huge. Needless to say. Yeah. Um. He's a lot. It's a lot. Mostly, I think for me because I am home with him and Rigel all day, and they're both like little puppies, or or toddlers. Either way you want to put it, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same chaos. Um. It's a lot, but he is going to the trainer soon, and um, I'm really excited about that, and we're really excited about his trainer, so. Yeah, it should be good, and I'm glad we have Diesel, but, like, it's weird because there's so many things in my life that have made sense to do those things when we've done them. Whoops. (laughs) Example number one. Okay, we're going to keep that turned off, okay? (laughs) <laughs> uh, so like everything that we've committed to or we've accepted or we've embraced, like it's made sense that we've done it with the time that we've done it in, but like nothing flows smoothly. Like anytime we make a little bit of progress with like the business or the competitions or like we close the chapter or door to something and hope to have some time, something yeah. else opens and we have less time than when we started with. It's hard too, because like we have friends and family who like contact me to want to hang out or they say like we really miss you guys or we want to hang out sometime and I'm like that'd be really cool in like five years or something you know yeah but it's like it's hard because literally Robert and I don't like this is the first time we've looked at each other in the eye to have a normal conversation <laughs> it's hard to justify going to hang out with friends when I don't even hang out with my wife you know um it's rough it's Ooh. rough yeah. uh but again this is our own Here. self-imposed chaos so like I've got nobody to blame but myself um, and I'm not complaining. It is just very stressful at times. But, like, with the business, that's taking up a whole bunch of attention and detail and focus right now. And there's things that are outside the control, like the whole cacao butter crisis situation, which I've talked about. Like, I just got back from Brazil trying to figure out a way to source cacao directly. And that's just chaos in and of itself. But, like, everything that we've done, I feel like it's made sense that we've done it that way. So I can't say that I wish I would have done anything differently. Rigel is, how old right now? Just turned two? He turned two in May, so he's two years and like, I don't know, three months or something. I had to call Chris the other day and ask her how old I was. Yes. That's sure kind of wild. Yep. I'm 32, by the way. Uh, I thought I was 33, but I'm 32, so I just gained a year, <laughs> which is good, uh, because I've probably lost five um, <laughs> in stress over the past little bit. But Rigel's rocking it. He's getting bigger. He's yeah. getting smarter. He's getting more uh, into everything. Into everything. Very opinionated. Lots of personality. Yeah. Um, we're going to go the homeschooling route in the beginning. And I feel like that'll Which be good for Which will be him. several years from now. So I'm trying but not to... But he's like pretty inquisitive and he's learning a lot now. Like he's learning a lot. Like he's doing swim lessons now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go to swim every single week with him. Um, he's oh, picking that up. That. He loves swim. And what else we got, babe? Anything else cooking as far as the homesteading stuff we've got? We've kind of had to do an unintentional downsize because several of our chickens got... Dieselized. Dieselized. <laughs> our dog's name is Diesel, if we didn't mention that. Yeah, so he uh, took a hankering to chickens for a while there. Yeah. Uh, we still yeah, have the it's actually sheep. been a good little while since he's gotten anything. So. Yeah, we've got three remaining chickens, and oh, he hasn't well, messed with you. those, so that's good. Um, but we are not going to get any more animals until we... Eat the sheep that we have. We get some. We will solid probably get structure. more chickens. We do need more eggs. We are gonna get more chickens, but I really want to like redo things. I really want to like paint their coop, get like a fenced up area. Like I just don't. I don't feel like I can. I don't feel like I can take on more chickens, knowing that we do have an issue with diesel, and if we don't get that under control, or we get more chickens and it's more attractive to him, that we. I need a safe place to put them, essentially. So like, I want to build a structure like a fenced in area for them and that way they can have 
free reign, but if Diesel is starting to show signs that he wants them again, then they have a safe place to go, and we just won't let them out again. So. Yeah, but, I mean, hopefully we'll know a lot more about his temperament after the training session. and Yeah, he he'll hopefully have a little bit more. He's going away for two weeks, so it's going to be interesting, but yeah. it should be really good. He is a really good dog, though. He's Super a great dog. Super smart dog, dog very protective. Like, everything He's we wanted to get He's already protective, which is interesting because everything that I've really read has, like, their protective instinct kind of hits around age two, and with him mm. being only seven months old, it's actually pretty good, like, we were walking around the property. I, me and Rigel were walking around the property, and um, there was a noise. One of the sheep made a noise, but he didn't know it was the sheep. And um, he totally got, like, all up in ruffles because they, he just was like, who are you? What are you doing? It was pretty cute. I was actually, like, so impressed with him and, like, thanked him because you could just tell he was, like, going into prote protective mode. And, yeah. Huh. You love Diesel? Roger loves tractors. Yep. You want to say tractor? Tractor. Tractor. He also loves motorcycles, but he pronounces that one Nemo. Can you say motorcycle? Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that, but... Okay, let's not play with those ones. Okay. Um, okay. But I'll tell you one thing. Like, before I had a kid, before I had a wife, I was like, I can't have a wife until I get the business dialed in because she's just going to be a distraction. And... That led to a whole bunch of disarray. I realized that I made a mistake, brought Crystal back into my life, and she's only been a positive for the business. Then I was like, I can't have a kid until I get the business solid because a kid will just be a distraction. That and, is uh, facts. <laughs> that is probably facts. That is probably facts. Uh, but I'm okay with that distraction because what's the point of having a business if I don't have a legacy to leave it to and someone that would take it over and he may not even want the business but like he gives me reason to do everything that i'm doing like he is my why for a lot of things for everything and that's a positive that's a good thing um but there is definitely no moment of solitude there's no moment of relaxation there's no moment of let's take a deep breath and just recenter like that doesn't exist in our lives right now i mean while you're at work you could have a moment I mean, I've got moments alone, but it's never, like, my, my, my thoughts are never at peace. Like, my mind is never in a tranquil state. It's always just total chaos. I've got World War Three raging in my mind at all times, which is what I signed up for, so I'm not complaining. But it is kind of exhausting at times. Um, but you come home, you see Raiji's all happy, and it makes it all worth it, you know. We have a... Uh, we started the podcast in 2016, consistently published two episodes since 2018, started it out recording in that big walk-in closet I had in Spokane, Washington, mm -hmm. in the basement, mm -hmm. and fast forward to today, episode 700, with Raiji sitting next to us eating his keto pizza and making a bunch of noise and messes, and having you, it's like... Uh, kind of crazy it's kind of crazy seeing the timeline of events unfold makes me excited for what the next 100 episodes of time will bring what do you anticipate in a year like if we're doing roughly about a pod episodes 100 every year what is this no next idea. year going to consist of i honestly don't know like all i do is just spend my time with rigel and like try to do as much work as i can i spend all my days with rigel um so just growing him really and hopefully doing some stuff on the homestead and stuff. It's really hard for me to make any decisions on the home stuff or um, really do anything cause, because I, I either need someone to help with him or... <laughs> Why are you eating uh, like that? You don't ever eat like that. You're just making a... Yep. You goober. What are yep. you doing? Yeah. Um, or I need help, you know, lifting something big or building something or whatever. That would be nice to have Robert alongside with four but um yeah I don't know it's just so I, I think that we could do a lot of stuff with the home stuff but um but I, just I don't like, know that I see it in the next year like it's just I just see a lot of crazy twists and turns with the business right now I hate inefficiencies and there's a ton of inefficiencies in our life right now which is frustrating yeah. especially with this whole year's theme being recalibration and I feel like we are certainly recalibrating certain things but there's so many things that have come in outside of our control and it's like 
we have to hurry up and wait until we resolve issues here before we can start refining things elsewhere. Yeah. And that's frustrating because, like I said, I hate inefficiencies, and there's just a bunch of those right now. And it's like you just have to embrace that chaos. Like when I look at how you responded during my competitive season – and, like, you weren't able to train as much as you normally would. You weren't able to be on top of everything that you normally do because you were helping me and wrangling Rigel. Yeah, it was and like we like, got back from a trip. I unpacked. I cleaned everything. I got everything okay. ready. Then I prepped all Robert's food. I prepped Rigel's food. I prepped my food. I packed everyone up. And then we loaded up and went and did the whole thing all over again. It was like there yeah. was no... But, like, you had to sacrifice a lot of the things that you would want to do, you know, solely... That was but you hard just kept saying just... that it was like a season. Like that was just a season. And I feel like we're in a season right now on a macro level. Like our life, our family, our existence is like just yeah. a season of chaos. And I'm just trying to be present through it all. Like I'm frustrated that things are inefficient. I'm frustrated that things are getting... There's so many ends that are not tied up. There's so many loose ends. There's so many things that are just frustrating to me with my very much so type A organized mindset. But... When I stop and think about it all in 80 years or whenever I'm on my deathbed, I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm really frustrated that we didn't get another 20 minutes to record this podcast and that there was a bunch of background noise. But I will be grateful for the fact that Rigel was with us, you Mm -hmm. know, and I feel like if I just embrace that with an air of appreciation for the things that we do have going for us. It makes the chaos and inefficiencies tolerable. Yeah. Ooh, uh-huh. You know. That's just me. Yep. Ooh, left foot bar. Okay. What do you think, Raiji? How you doing on time, babe? You got to leave in five minutes. Yep. You are kind of bringing back some Lady Savage stuff, potentially. Am I? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I've been... Obviously, like we've talked about, is like it's been chaotic in our lives, and um, I've honestly just been like keeping things afloat. I feel like I make sure Rigel stays healthy and alive and fed and all of the good things that children should be, um, and I keep our household running, and I try to keep Robert from losing it (laughs) yeah like i mean robert's been traveling a lot and he has a lot more travel through the rest of the year and rigel and i have just been staying home i've been staying home with diesel and the sheep and the chickens and the child and all the things so i feel like i've just been like staying but i have not been i'd say i would not be as on top of like my nutrition and my workouts and things like that like there's a lot of reasons to not, and but there's also a lot of reasons to do it. So um, I've thought about bringing back my Instagram. I've had a lot of people reach out and say like, hey, like it would be nice if you just brought back the Instagram so I can reference back to it. No, you can have those later, okay? Um, but because like I did have like all my pregnancy stuff from Rigel and all that, like it was nice for people to reference back to or share my page with other people. But it's also just a really good way for me to kind of like keep myself accountable and stuff. I have been like tracking my, we'll have it when we go bye-bye. Okay. In a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to get in the car soon. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I may end up bringing it back. I may not, but for now my lady savage website is actually turned off, which is kind of crazy for me, but um, I am from time to time, time accepting new clients, but I just don't have a website for them to sign up through. So, um, I just been directly emailing them and things like that. So I but pretty much turned get, everything off with Lady Savage. You and, are going to get more involved with the core stuff too, though, which is another yeah. outlet for you, which is good. Yeah. I'm trying to take my time as I like ease back into things because mm-hmm. Rigel is starting to get to the point where he can, he can be a little bit more independent and... Um, I may get a little bit of help here and there, but when we have help, like he's never fully gone from me. He's still in the same room or the same building or whatever. Um, even when someone else is watching him. So it's really, it's, it's just me trying to balance my time and my energy and, you know, nap times and making sure I get rest and fed and all the things. So it's just been like a huge balance for me as being a toddler mom. So it's a lot different than being a baby mom. 
Yeah. <laughs> They're two totally different worlds. They're both busy, but different busies. Um, so, yeah. As I say busy, Rigel's unpacking the entire bag that I have to pack in about five seconds so that I can run out the door. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up there. Um, but I, it's kind of fitting that he's here being chaotic because this whole thing is yeah i mean this is what i mean like he he literally doesn't ever go away like he's never been watched away from me i think ellen watched him one time for like 30 minutes Mm -hmm. um but he is always with me and he doesn't want to be away from me and that's okay that's the season that we're in right now but it's um it is the chaos that is our life i think i think we'll be very grateful and again like we're not gonna think about how stressed we were during this phase we're gonna think about the positive memories that we made with him. And I think that's what it's all about. Like I subscribed to this daily dad newsletter and like a lot of parents regret not spending more time with their kids. And I'm definitely gone a lot. Like you spend much more time with him than I do, but I'm grateful that we don't send him off to be watched somewhere. Like he's not in daycare all day long he's with yeah. you not that there's anything with wrong me. with that for each each family does their own thing there's people that are out there judging me right now for ne- never having someone watch him and that's yeah. okay too you're allowed to judge me but um it's just not it's not for our family even though it, it adds additional struggles it's not for our family yeah i think the whole concept of embracing the chaos is that much more amplified because we have taken him on to the extent that we have but i can't imagine doing it any other way yeah. You when know. we when we decided to be parents, we knew that this is what we wanted. So we're just in the thick of what we decided we wanted. Well, now that we have uh, 20 minutes to talk to each other, not undistracted, but nonetheless. You're really to handsome. Other. Yeah. Well, you, you're, you're quite attractive <laughs> yourself, babe. I do love you. I do love, I love you. I love you, too. Um, hope that I'll see you some more sometime soon. Yeah. So. I will let you guys know that we have decided to have dedicated time together in the morning. So... We it's a new it's a new thing that we're tr- we're like trying to make happen, but it's been pretty successful thus far, right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, relatively so. Yeah. Um. All right, Rigel's crazy. She's got to run to appointment. Hey, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. We love y'all. Thank you for listening to episode seven hundred of the podcast. We'll keep them coming, and we got some exciting things in the works from a business standpoint, from all kinds of things from a family standpoint. So more things in the works. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Love you, babe. Love Love y'all for listening. We'll talk to you next time.